Citizen Machinery UK have invited us into the complex cold forming in the Midlands. Now, first of all, I'm thinking, why do you need a sliding head if you're doing complex cold forming? Talk me through, though, Mike, the first process in, in terms of complex cold forming, just briefly, please. Um, with complex cold forming, uh, what we're doing is uh, manipulating material uh, by the means of um, cold headed machines to uh, take apart from wire form into a finished product. Um, An example you've got here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what we've got here is uh, uh, one of our uh, M22 plugs. Um, we make this on our Nedroff machine, it's on a six station, and uh, through a very uh, system of progressions, we go from the wire to the end product. What sort of pressure and tonnage has been hit on that? On this particular machine, we're using a 600 ton press. So yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a lot, but then again, there's quite a lot of forces required to uh, move the metal around into the uh, place we want. Impressive stuff. I'm going to stop you there, though, because Citizen have invited us along to, to, to meet you guys. I'm thinking sliding head, head technology, why do you need it? Um, as part of our business strategy, really, uh, we've gone away and we've tried to sort of diversify our uh, product range. Um, sticking with what we know, uh, we uh, produce millions of valve spring retainers to every single OEM in every single continent worldwide. Um, but there is also opportunity to you know, find other markets. And what we've done is we've looked into the motorsport market. Now, uh, this particular product that we're producing on the machine at the moment is for McLaren. Um, with a McLaren engine becomes you know, a higher performance requirements. Um, with our normal uh, valve train that we produce via the cold forming methodology, um, we're making for 1.9 turbo diesels or a two liter petrol engine. You know, when it comes to a, a, a 4.8 or a 5.5 V8 twin turbo, um, the requirements and stresses and strains on the component uh, significantly rise. So um, you need tougher materials and more accuracy? Absolutely. Um, what we're using is a sort of an EN24T, which is already a treated through hardened bar. Um, this then goes through a aerospace grade uh, heat treatment process, which is like an epsilon layer, which will then give the part uh, high strength and integrity, as well as good surface hardness. Okay, so you're also doing it right. You've won a, won a job for McLaren. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, based on the success of what we've been doing here, uh, we've also managed to expand our market uh, further to uh, General Motors in uh, North America on their new HPVA project. So. Example of UK manufacturing going out of But why did you choose Citizen? Um, at the time when we were choosing Citizen, there were only really two markets out there for, for, what, for what we wanted. Uh, and the Citizen met our needs greater than the other company. So, And they provide a whole solution from the bar feed through to the swarf conveyor at the other end. Absolutely, yeah. It was literally a turnkey product for us. So uh, we, um, at, at the point of buying the machine, we had an idea of the products that we wanted to make. We put these through to Citizen and we worked with their engineering and technical departments and we ended up with a, literally a turnkey solution with uh, parts coming off the machine. Now, this, I'm standing right next to the first one you bought, the L32, yep. but we're here to talk mainly about the next one, which is the same L32, but everybody's, well, tip of everybody's tools, I'll use that pun again, LFE. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with, with advancements in technology, uh, Citizen have obviously moved their technology on and we wanted to get on that and be on the, uh, the edge of technology, really. Right. So Now, I don't want to stop you there, Mike, but you know a lot about the machines, but I think we need to speak to the bloke who's actually running them all day, every day, and knows his stuff. Well, not that you don't know his stuff, okay. of course. It's a bit rude. Yeah. But we're going to have a chat with Tom, who's been busy beavering away in the background. Thank you, Mike. Absolutely, no worries. Right, having insulted Mike, I'm going to have a chat with Tom now about operating the machine. Right, first of all, sliding head technology you're new to this yes uh, we are new to it it is a very steep learning curve but um, the support from sitting was great with it once you get it up and going and you know what you're doing with it you, it gets much faster when you program and you come to the uh, development and uh, they are good okay, so great sport all around from the sort of the initial sale and solution through to training yeah the training was hard um, it was more of a new thing that you just got to learn really but once you get there like anything you pick it up really quick the, uh, the operators have picked it up really quick uh, and then it just becomes second nature really like setting any other machine all right say that as well then in terms of controls because these are mitsubishi you've not used mitsubishi controls before no we've only used a, a different control system but they said it was very similar so we haven't really had to learn anything different um, when it comes to the program inside of it the citizen make a wizard software which uh, once you learn that as well the, it becomes so quick and easy to write these programs. Making it sound nice and simple. Now, the big question on the tip of my tongue is the LFE, because you've got the L32 we've already mentioned. This is the L32, but you had to buy it for another contract. 
got the LFB. Why did you buy it like that? Really, it was because we wanted the machine to be more efficient. We wanted to be able to do a bigger depth of cut with a better service finishes, which is what this LFB is supposed to provide. And um, it will be right for some inserts and some different cycles, roughing or finishing maybe. But um, we found that it will work on some things and not on others. And once you start to learn that yourself, you learn to optimise the LFB itself. Right, so it's, it's, it's sort of balancing that between the right tools and the LFB, but with the training you're getting from Citizen and also the tool suppliers. Oh yes, exactly, yeah. Um, we had a short LFB training, really didn't take long. They explained it within five minutes and within the next five minutes we knew how to use it. Um, I think the tool inspires are learning a bit more about it themselves because it's more of a Citizen niche. Um, but they get in there, you know, they do offer support with it. They want the machines to run as efficiently as they can as well. So um, hopefully we'll just improve and improve. What sort of depth of cut are you getting then on this machine? Uh, we've gone with the first LFB and we had six mil. We have got a new tool that we are waiting to use. We will use it next week, which we're hoping to do a 10 mil depth of cut using the LFB, which will save on our cycle time as well. Absolutely, 10 mil depth of cut, though. that's we're impressive. So yeah, yeah. We look forward to coming back and filming that. Now you said about cycle times. How's the LFB reduce your cycle time? It does slightly, but um, you gain your cycle time back in your depth of cut when you don't need to do certain profiles because the LFB will just chip all the swarf for you. Uh, if you get an optimum running speed, then it, it runs so you don't notice any cycle time difference really. And again, with the, with the swarf, there's less, op well, there's no swarf or reduced swarf, um, less operator intervention? Oh, definitely. The amount of times we've been cleaning out other CNC machines just to take out bird's nests and uh, now it's all lovely chips as you can see in the swarf bin. Well, I noticed that it's not all chips, there is a bit of swarf there. Can I just grab one of the components that yeah, we're... sure. Because one. what I think is relevant is you're not using LFB on this whole part all the way through, is that right? No, only on the roughing cycle, really where you would get your long, horrible bird's nest strands. Yeah, okay. So if you're doing that, is it easy to change the amplitude and turn the LFB on and off? It takes seconds. Yeah, yeah so nice and simple. So yeah. that's a great sort of endorsement of the Citizen, the LFB. Any other points you, you want to bring across? Um, no, I think you've hit the nail on the head really. I think uh, the more we use the citizens, we're hoping to get more and more sliding heads um, and we're just going to try and get our market on uh, these high, high value, low volume products. Well, you're obviously doing something right because you're doing work, <laughs> clarinet, etc. So, Tom, great work. Thank you very much. Thank you.